Hey guys, this is Anand Shimpy from Anantech.com and we've got the touchpad by HP running WebOS 3.0. For those of you that haven't had any experience with WebOS, I wanted to give you a quick tour of uh, the OS and, and really just what makes it so awesome in my opinion. Uh, but real quick, let's go over hardware. So this is a 9.7 inch screen, 1024 by 768 like the iPad 2. It's an IPS panel, again like the iPad 2. Brightness characteristics, white levels, black levels, contrast, uh, very, very similar to the iPad 2. So from uh, all intents and purposes, this is a near identical panel to uh, what Apple's using in the iPad 2. Uh, internally, uh, things are a bit different. Um, Qualcomm won the contract for pretty much all web devices or all web devices uh, from HP, top to bottom. So from the Veer to the Pre-3 to the touchpad. The touchpad is the only dual core device in the WebOS lineup. It's got an APQ 8060. Um, you might be familiar with the smartphone version of that, which is the MSM 8660 or 8260. Uh, the difference between a APQ and MSM is really the presence of a modem. So this is a Wi-Fi only device and thus it uses the APQ model. Uh, internally you've got two 1.2 gigahertz uh, 45 nanometer Scorpion cores. Uh, they run at up to 1.2 gigahertz and they can throttle down all the way to around 200 megahertz uh, independently of one another. Uh, you've got an Adreno 220 GPU, so the fastest that Qualcomm makes today. And pretty much the fastest that you'll see from Qualcomm uh, through 2012. Uh, beginning next year or early next year, hopefully we'll see uh, Qualcomm's next generation architecture. But for now, this is pretty much king of the hill. You got a gigabyte of DDR2 LPDDR2 memory, and you've got in this particular model a 32 gigs of MLC NAND. Uh, although you can get a 16 gig version as well. Pricing is 499 or 599 depending on uh, how much storage you get. There is no external SD card. Uh, in fact, there are no inputs on this device at all. You rely entirely on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Uh, so let's get to the software itself. Um, for those of you who have used iOS or Android, Honeycomb, what have you, this is your home screen. It's significantly different from either of those in that you can't really put anything on the home screen. The home screen is really just a background. Um, and we'll, we'll get to what just type is in a second, but the, the biggest part of WebOS, what makes it so cool is this concept of cards. So we're gonna launch the web browser. You'll see, if you wanna see that again, it starts as a card, goes full screen. And once it's full screen, it's just a normal web browser. So let's go to Anantec real quick. Web browsing performance isn't as good as the competitors, but you'll see it's, it's pretty decent regardless. Uh, this is one of the problems that I mentioned in the review. You notice that some of those gestures early on weren't registering. That is a problem with the touchpad right now. Uh, once it starts doing things, uh, occasionally it'll just stop responding to input. Um, and, and it's just really, really frustrating because this is the best tablet for multitasking. So when you're in a, uh, an application in full screen mode and you want to go switch to something else or, or do anything, uh, you have two options. You can either, one, tap the home button, and that'll bring you into the card view again, or you can perform a, a bezel gesture, swipe up. Now from here, I can do a lot of things. I can quit the app by throwing it up like that. I can also quit an app if I've started it but haven't completely launched the app yet. So I launch the web browser and say, no, I actually don't want to do that. Uh, you can actually quit before the app ever, uh, ever completely starts. So we'll bring up the web browser again and, and show you another concept here within WebOS. So again, this is the card, and you'll see a card will continue to animate, continue to load, even when we're in this zoomed out view. In the browser application, you can actually spawn multiple tabs. Um, under WebOS, they spawn as multiple cards. And you'll see, again, that was another situation where uh, I tapped to create a tab, it didn't create it, or, or it didn't look like it was creating it, tapped again, and then it queued up and, and executed both at the same time. Um, so here what we have is another card stacked up on the original card in what is known as a stack. So you can actually stack multiple cards, more than two. So here we have a stack of three, and I can reorder them, I can easily access them, And that's pretty much the basis of WebOS right there. Now, you can have apps from any nature in a stack together. So I could fire up photos here and add this to the stack. And then I could take my Google tab and bring it out here as its own card. And it's really just the, the idea of a stack is really just to uh, prevent your list of cards here from getting unmanageably long. Right, right now we've got four, that's not a problem, but you can quickly see how, let's say we fire up Facebook, um, and then fire up Adobe Reader, etc. 
see if it executed Adobe Reader. Yeah, there we go. Again, that's one of the problems we have right now with the touchpad where you, you go to tap something and you don't know if it's respond or not, or, or, or if it's responsive or not, and you don't know, should you tap again, or you know, do, you, uh, do you wait it out? Um, so right there, I tapped, and several seconds later, finally, Memo's launched. Uh, but you can see how these lists get really, really long, and the way that HP deals with that is by allowing you to stack things on top of each other. But really, this is the, the fundamental of, uh, the, these are the fundamentals of WebOS. The ability to multitask this well and this quickly and this easily uh, and quit applications. And, and as soon as I, I throw an application up like that, or you can even pull down and let go, as soon as you do that, it, it kills the process. So it frees up all that memory. Um, and, and neither Honeycomb nor iOS really allow you to multitask or uh, even launch and quit apps as easily as, as WebOS does. So that's, that's really what makes the touchpad. The issues that you saw here and the issues that I describe in our, in our written review, those are the primary problems with the touchpad today. Uh, you start doing a lot on it and it, it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't perform well under a lot of load. Um, and that's unfortunate because there is a lot of compute in here. Uh, I mentioned the, the dual core APQ 8060 uh, should be fast enough to do a lot of this stuff. Um, and you can see when, when these apps aren't actually doing much, the system is very, very responsive. Uh, it's just occasionally you get these hiccups, and especially when you have a couple apps that are uh, doing a lot at the same time, uh, that then you, you start to run into major problems. And the reason that's such a big issue here is because WebOS allows you to multitask so much better than the competition, um, so you actually want to multitask. And unfortunately, once you really start pushing it, uh, it just it slows down to a crawl. Um, the best way I can explain it is it's kind of like uh, using a netbook with a really, really slow hard drive at that point. Um, you know, you go to tap on something, you go to click on something, you don't know if it's responsive or not, or, you know, if what you did had registered. Um, and it just becomes a very, very frustrating experience. Now, if HP can improve on that and make the experience this smooth and this elegant all of the time, then I think this has uh, a lot of potential as a tablet. Um, to be honest, just I feel like it can do so much more with the touchpad than I can any of the other tablets we've reviewed. And it, it just boils down to this UI. Uh, notifications, that's one thing I didn't touch on. Uh, all your notifications happen up here. So you can see I got a new email. Um, if I want to go to my email app, I just tap on that and it'll launch my email app. Now, oops. Now if I, uh, otherwise I could have just tapped on that and, and canceled the notification. And there you have it. There's a, a brief overview of WebOS. Um, for a full review, check it out on anontech.com. Thanks and take care. Bye-bye.